Hello, my brothers. Hello, my sisters. Another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord, to always give him the thanks today, to always give him the praise today, to always give him the glory today. Another day that we're able to seek him, to praise him. They say, you know what, Jesus? We have our faith and our hope and trust. We're giving it to you. Because that's all we have, Jesus. And even though that our situation and our circumstances and our progress still looking the same, we haven't seen any change yet. But Jesus, the only thing we have right now is our hope, our faith, and our trust in you. But right now, we want to say thank you for the day because this is the day that you have made. And we are so glad, we are so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. Today is the day we thank you today, Jesus. Today is the day that we praise you today, Jesus. Today is the day that we worship you today, Jesus, because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be seeked. You are worthy each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of you, God, that's why we're here today. Because of your grace and your mercy, we are here for another day. Hallelujah, we thank you today. We just can't thank you enough for everything that you have done, what you're doing. Praise is necessary, my brothers and my sisters. Praying is necessary. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, and if you are facing trouble right now, you need to thank him right now. You need to praise him right now, and you need to get on your knees and pray to him. Let him know what's going on right now today. Let him know how you feel right now today. Be honest with God. He loved honesty, my brothers. He loved honesty, my sisters. But in the midst of all that, still give him the thanks and praise and glory. Because it was him who died on the cross for every last one of us. It was him who carried every last one of our sins. So doesn't he deserve the praise? Praise is an everyday thing. It's not a, a on and off switch thing. And it's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. So give Jesus the thanks. Give him the praise. And give him the glory. Because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. My brothers my sisters. It's such a blessing to have y'all guys in my life. My path right now today. I want to say thank y'all so much. For tuning in. And listening to another word. And another message. That's coming from my Heavenly Father God. Y'all guys could have been doing anything else today. But y'all chose to watch Jesus YouTube channel. Y'all chose to listen to this word and this message today. Minister LT want to let you know how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am for every last one of y'all. My brothers, thank you so much. My sisters, thank y'all so much. Every boy and girl, thank you so much. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank y'all so much. Words can't even explain how happy I am for every last one of y'all. Words can't even explain how thankful I am. Thank y'all so much. And I know for a fact that God is doing something new in every last one of your lives. According to Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 through 20, he is doing something new. He is preparing something for y'all right now today because of your faithfulness, your obedience, and by you being a faithful servant. Right now, he is opening doors for y'all right now. Blessings and breakthroughs coming y'all way right now. I'm praying for healing and victory for every last one of y'all right now today. Prosperity. For every last one of y'all day. Rain and help. I was praying that y'all are more than enough. That y'all are more than conquering my brothers and my sisters. And Minister LT want to say thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone. I mean anyone out there in the world today. That has not yet. Asked Jesus. to come into their life. But today is the day. That you are really really ready to ask Jesus to come into your life today right now I'm encouraging you right now today just to head to the altar right now today just to go in your room right now today because I tell you one thing my brothers my sisters there's a lot of people right now might not even have their chance or opportunity to even ask Jesus that question right now because they're fighting for their life in the hospital they are hanging on by a thread don't even know if they're able to see the next day or not there's a lot of people right now don't even have a chance or opportunity anymore because they're dead and gone, my brothers and sisters. My point is, what I'm saying, tomorrow's not promising nobody. 
Next week is not promising nobody. Next month is not promising nobody. Or next year is not promising nobody. Today is the day that you need to make that happen right now. And if you are not 100% sure if something was to happen right now today, if you don't know if you're going to heaven or if you're going to hell, you need to ask Jesus to come into your life right now today. And I know for a fact some of you really not don't even know it for sure because there's so many lost souls out there. And if you're one of those lost souls and you're not 100% sure, please head to the altar right now. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what they might think or say about you. You need to make this obligation and this move for yourself. Not for nobody else, but you need to do it for yourself. Amen? Amen. And all you got to say is, Lord Jesus, I ask of you to be my Lord and Savior Christ. And once you boldly confess that, right then and there you are saved. You are born again. You have just accepted and received the Holy Spirit in your life. Somebody around the world just got saved right now today because you have just asked Jesus to come into your life. I just want to say glory, hallelujah to my brothers and my sisters right now. Glory, hallelujah to every boy and every girl right now today. Thank you so much. I'm not here to build a church. I'm here to, to save lost souls because there are so many lost souls. I'm, I'm, I'm here to bring people to Jesus so you know who Jesus is and have that personal relationship with him. So if something was to happen, you know for sure. You know for a fact that you have assurance, not insurance, but you have assurance knowing that you're going to heaven. Amen. Heaven is glorifying right now today because somebody just came home. Heaven is glorifying right now because somebody just asked Jesus to come into their life. Heaven is glorifying today. Amen. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, I have a, a important word today. And I know for a fact in this message today is going to hit home today. Because actually I was going to really preach on something else. And as I was at work today, and, and before I was just about to go home, the Holy Spirit really just hit me really, really hard. He said, LT, I really need you to hit on this subject right here. Somebody is going through this at this very minute, at this very moment right now. I said, okay. And we're going to be talking about you never know nobody. You never know a person until they show you their true color. And right now, some of you right now, you think the person that you hang with right now is your best friend, your homeboy, your homegirl, or it could be a family member, or it could be an in-law. And you thought the whole time that you was with this person, y'all thought that everything was cool, that everything was cordial, then bam, something happened. You're like, wow, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this happening. You never know a person until they show you their true colors. And that's what we'll be talking about because when I'm talking about it's in the Bible. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this can't thank you enough for an awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for another day in life. I can't thank you for our health today. I can't thank you for our strength today. I just can't thank you for the food that you put on that table today and the clothes and shoes that you put on that back. I just can't thank you how you provided. I just can't thank you for the for the blessing. I can't thank you for the breakthrough. I can't thank you for the healing. I can't thank you for our anointing. I can't thank you for our deliverance. I can't thank you for our help. I can't thank you for the rain. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm always putting my hope, my faith, my trust in you each and every day, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. Amen. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, we're about to get into this word. And I'm going to love for y'all to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. That's Genesis chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And if you have your Bibles open and ready to receive this word today, let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you. Adam lay with his wife Eve. And she became pregnant. And gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks 
and Cain worked in the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portion from some of the firstborn of the flock. Then, Lord, then the Lord looked with favor on Abel in the offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what's right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Mm. Now, eight. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Mm, 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 mm. Cain killed his brother. Now, do you know, if Cain really knew how his brother really felt, don't you think he would have asked for help from his mother or his father? See, the whole point of this mess we're about to get into, you never know a person until they show you their true color. Abel didn't know about his brother. He just thought him and his brother were tight, that it was cool, both of them were doing, was working for the Lord. He, he didn't know none of this, how his brother felt about him. He didn't see the envy. He didn't see the hate. He didn't see the jealousy. The only thing he saw was his brother. That's the only thing he saw. That's the only thing he wanted to see. He didn't want to see anything else. He said, you know what, this is the only brother I have. We tight. We got a bond. We have a connection. But he didn't see the other side of his brother. He didn't see the envy. He didn't see the jealousy. He didn't see the hatred. And right now, some of you right now, you're in that same situation right now today. Right now, you are facing the same outcome just as Cain and Abel was going through. And you never knew that person the whole time. You never knew that person was jealous of you. Now, did you? You didn't know that person was backstabbing the whole time. You didn't know that person had their eyes on you the whole time. You didn't know that person was downplaying you the whole time. You didn't know that person was, was, was throwing stones at you the whole time because you were looking at that person as a friend, as a brother, as a sister, as a cousin, as a neighbor, or as an in-law, or even as a co-worker. You never saw it until something happened. You didn't see it because God was watching you. You couldn't see it because God had fear of you. But the enemy, the hater, and the jealous person, they saw that God had favor on you. They saw that God was taking care of you. They saw how God was blessing you and not them. Then when the true blessing came, then that's when you was able to see the true color of that person and it probably blew your mind mind boggling like wow i didn't see that i thought you and i was tight we grew up together we went to the same elementary school we went to the same junior high we went to the same high school we played sports together we played in the sandbox together but now i see the true you right now today i see the envy i see the jealous of you it's not like y'all had a, a fist fight it's not like that you took his girlfriend or she took your boyfriend. It's not like that you took something from them. It was just that God had faith on you. And they they didn't like that. They really despised you. And you couldn't see it the whole time because when you caught up in the middle, my brothers, and when you caught up in the middle, my sisters, you can't see the other person that really had their eye on you when they downplaying you, when they hating you, when they are jealous of you because you right there stuck in the middle. So sometimes if you don't take yourself out of the equation, you will never see that real person. You will never see a person true color. I had to go through that once I moved. Once God removed me, from Charlotte, North Carolina, and he bombed me down here to Georgia. See, the whole time when I was in Charlotte, I thought everybody I was hanging with, I thought really they was my friends. I really thought they was my homeboys. I really thought they was down with me. But until God moved me, and God had his hand on me, and God touched my heart, and God favored me, then that's when I was able to see the true colors of some people I never thought they'd ever do me like that. And it bothered me. Yes, it hurted me. But I was like, wow, the whole time, I know him. We grew up together. I never thought that he was the one that 
betray me. I never thought he would be the one that backstabbed me. I never thought he'd be the one that would talk bad about me. It wasn't only friends. It was family members too. Went through the same thing. And I went through with in-laws. I never thought that she would be the one who cut me off of Facebook and said, you know what? I don't really like him. I was just playing the whole time. And yes, it bothered me. It bothered me bad. Real bad to the core. And my wife said, babe, are you okay? I said, I, it hurt me a little bit. By the end of the day, I would get through it. My whole point is, of this message today, Cain and Abel went through the same thing. Abel didn't know that his brother was jealous of him. Abel didn't know that Cain was envious of him. He didn't know that because if he did, don't you think he would have went to his dad or to his mother and said, you know what? I think my brother's out to kill me. I think my brother's out want to hurt me. I think my brother's want to do something to me really, really bad. He couldn't see it because he was caught right there in the middle. Only thing he saw was his blood brother. Only thing he saw was his best friend. The only thing he saw was his, his comrade. The only thing he saw was his partner. That's the only thing that Abel saw. He didn't see anything else. See, but Cain, he saw it. He saw it. He saw how God favored him. See, but Cain had a chance. He had a chance to change that. But he didn't. He was so jealous of what God was doing for him when all he had to do was change his ways and God would have did the same thing for him. But he didn't do it. He was so stubborn and so hateful to change his ways so God can favor him, but he didn't do it. And that's what exactly what somebody going through right now today. God can favor you too, my brothers. God can favor you too, my sisters, if you get that hate out of your spirit, if you get that enviousness out of your spirit, if you get that jealousy out of your spirit. So one thing, my brothers and sisters, that you got to realize, God sees everything. God sees everything because he's everywhere. So he already know who's jealous of you. He already know who's envious of you. He already know who's hating on you. And the reason why he's know that, because he tests that heart. And once God knows it's jealousy in that heart, envy in that heart, hatred in that heart, he telling you right now, you better watch out for that person who you hanging with right now today. You better watch out for that neighbor. You better watch out for that so-called friend. You better watch out for your family member. Because right now, you never know a person until you they show you the true colors. And every time, it always happened that way. It can be something amazing happen in your life. And something, don't happen, and, and something don't happen in life, what they do? They show you who they really is. And, the, and I always heard a long time ago, even my grandmother always set us down. When a person shows you who they really are, that's really who they are the whole time. But see, the thing about it, we can't see it because we're so caught up in it. We can't see it because we're around them all the time. We can't see it because we're hanging with them. We can't see it because we're fellowshipping with them. We can't see it because we're stuck right there in the middle. And that's why Abel couldn't see the attack on his life. He couldn't see if you paid him. He couldn't see if you told him because he was caught right there in the middle. He was right there in the midst, right there everything, and he couldn't see it. That's why you can't see it, my sisters. That's why you can't see it, my brothers. And the whole time you're like, man, I would never thought that man would there do me like that. I would never thought that, that my friend girl would do me like that. I would never thought that my family member would do me like that. I would never thought that my in-laws would do me like that. I never thought that my husband would do me like that. I never thought that my wife would do me like that. I never thought that my girlfriend or my boyfriend would do me like that. You don't really know. You don't know. When God got faith on you, Sometimes the person that's with you the most really is the one who's envying you the most. Really is who's hating you the most. Really is who's jealous of you the most. It always be the ones that's real close to you. It never failed. Cain was close to Abel. Abel was close to Cain. You see my point when I'm coming in that, right? It always going to be the ones that know you. That know more of you. That know best of you. The ones that's close to you. That's been hanging with you. That's been riding with you. They know your moves. They know your motives. They know your actions. They know your ways. They know everything about you. Them are the ones who will always do it to you every single time. I don't know who's this word for the day. I don't know who's this message for the day. But this word and this message today is clearly for somebody today. And I was, I was just meditating on this and I was like, man, wow. Wow. And and you look at it, God told him. He said, then the Lord said to Cain, 
Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast if you do what is right? God gave him a chance to change his evil ways. God gave him a chance to get that jealousy out of his heart and spirit. God gave him a chance to get that enviness out of his heart and spirit. God gave him a chance to get that hatred out of his heart and spirit, but he didn't. Cain already had in his mind that he was going to take his brother out. He already had his mind that his brother gonna, he was going to show his brother his true colors. It was already planned. It was already premeditated what he was going to do. And that's what Zach was going on with you right now today. The same person that did you like that, it was already planned, my brothers and my sisters. It was already premeditated. You just couldn't see it because you were stuck right there in the middle. You were still hanging around with him. You couldn't see it. It's always be the ones who know the most of you. They know you better than anything. They know you better than anybody. It always be them. My point is today, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know who's going through this. I don't know who's facing this. Let this be a lesson learned. The next time you want to get close to somebody, why don't you take yourself out of the picture and just start looking and start examining because the ones who see that God is favoring you, who's got God had his hands on you, might be the main ones who's going to show you their true colors. Might be the one that's be just like Cain. Sometimes you got to take yourself out of the picture. Sometimes you got to take yourself out of the equation. You got to sit back and just look. See, the thing about us, we so we be so caught up in the motion picture, we don't want to take we don't want to take our stuff out of the motion picture and just be the extra. Sometimes you have to be the extra instead of being the the main actor or the main actress in the movie. I learned that the hard way, and once I learned that, I started being more the extra. It started me being the main character in the movie. Because when you're the main character in the movie, you're always going to have another main character want to outdo you, want to outshine you. But when God has favor on you and when God bless you and when he's not getting blessed or when she's not getting blessed, that's when the envy come in. That's when the hatred come in. That's when the jealousy come in. That's when, bam, that's when they're going to show you their true side. That's when you're going to see a different side of that person who you never thought was ever going to betray you or do you wrong. It always happened that way. It never fails. And how I know that is right here in the Bible. Look at the text. It's right here. That's how I know that. It's right here. That's how I know that it, it, it always happened that way. The Bible don't lie. The text don't lie. It always tell you how it's going to go down. Abel couldn't see it. He couldn't see it. He was blind to the fact. But if he wasn't blind, if he just took himself out of the motion picture and said, no, I'm going to be an extra. And if, no, if he would have been an extra for one day, then he would have been able to see the downcast of his brother. He would have been able to see the hatred, the envy, and the jealousy. Then when he would have been able to saw it, then he would have been able to go tell his mother and father what his brother was up against or what his brother was planning to do to him. But he couldn't see it. It was too late. And when it was too late, he died. When it was too late, you got your heart broke. When it was too late, you got let down. When it was too late, everybody put it on social media. When it's too late, everybody knew your business. Because why? You were too much caught in the metal. You couldn't see it. I've been there. Many times. So the point is, my message today, you never know a person until they show you their true color. Stop being the main character of the movie and start being the extra of the movie. Then you'll be able to see the person who have envious towards you, who have hatred towards you, and who have jealousy towards you. Amen? Amen. And I hope that this word and I hope that this message was clearly helpful towards somebody today. And if it was, I want you to give Jesus the thanks, the praise, and glory right now in the mighty name of Jesus in his house right now. Give him thanks and praise and glory for this word and this message today if you receive it. Amen? Amen. And before I close, I always like to end with a prayer. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us, so we can continue to build a relationship with you. And I believe right now in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working 
everything got in our life right now. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. And always stay prayed up. I love y'all. Y'all stay blessed. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen.